Right, today's lesson is going to be about black body radiation. So that is your title today. Um, uh, so if you write that in your book with your date and everything. Now, this lesson's going to be the last lesson of the waves topic. I know uh, some of you were here last week and we started magnets, but this is going to be for waves. Um, just a last little bit to finish this off. Um, so we'll get started. So first thing I want to think about and try and get yourself an answer uh, before you uh, move on. So explain how we can see these objects as green or black. So why do you look at a tree and why do you see it's green? And why do you look at like this little black box and why do you see that that is black? So if you want to pause the video now and just um, so pause the video and have a go at answering it yourselves and then I'll go through the answers. Okay, so if you're ready to go, I'll explain why we see these objects as what we see them. So visible light emitted from the sun is emitted in all different wavelengths and the primary colours of that being red, green and blue. So white light, which is split up into them red, green and blue and all the other colours as well, but um, we just focus on these three to make it simple. Red, green and blue light emitted from the sun appearing white to us um, goes and hits the tree. Now the red and the blue light are absorbed. So they are absorbed into the tree and will increase the temperature of the um, leaves and are used by the leaves for photosynthesis, but it's a different matter. Um, and the green light is reflected from the tree and into our eyes, so we see it as green. So anything that you see as a colour, um, some of the wavelengths of light are absorbed by the object and the rest are emitted and you see the ones that are emitted. But what about this little black box then? Why is that black? So the reason for that is it is absorbing pretty much all of the radiation from the sun and none of it is reflected. So this is not a perfectly black object though because it's basically nothing can be. So nothing can emit no radiation at all. Okay. Um, if it was, it would be something we would call a perfect black body. Okay, so a black body would be something which it absorbs all the radiation which comes off it. And therefore, you wouldn't be able to see it at all. Um, so, but with a normal like black coloured object, it just absorbs most of the radiation, and in the visible spectrum anyway, and therefore doesn't give out much that you can't see. So, um, thinking about that, moving on to a different part of the spectrum, have a look at this image here. And think about what does this tell you. Okay, so again, if you can write a quick answer down, see what you think. Okay, and pause the video and then play it again when you're ready. So, this tells us, this is an infrared image, and it shows us different parts of this dog that are giving off different amounts of radiation. So the higher the temperature, the more radiation it will emit, okay? And it is emitting infrared radiation. Now, if you remember on your spectrum, infrared radiation is just um, on the higher wavelength side of uh, visible light. And if you think about what happens if something gets warmer, it's giving off more infrared radiation, more and more and more um, infrared radiation. So, a couple of quick questions to think about here, though, before we move on from this. How objects maintain a constant temperature, okay, and what is happening to some of the radiation, and think about how we are seeing this object, okay, this body, how are we seeing this object? Um, so, pause it again, and press play when you've had a go at answering these two. Right, so, for the first one, the constant temperature. So, to maintain a constant temperature, something must emit the same amount of radiation as it absorbs or produces itself. Okay. Ooh, so with this dog, obviously being a mammal, it would produce some of heat by itself uh, through chemical reactions. But in general, normal objects, if they emit the same amount of radiation as they absorb, they will maintain a constant temperature. Um, but if you think about this, how we can see the objects, we must be able to see the object because it is reflecting some of the light. And that's for every object. Every object that we know of will reflect some light. Okay. But if we had a theoretical object which didn't emit any light, 
at all, we would call it a black body. Okay, and I want you to have a read of the information I've sent you. Um, so you should have got that uh, through Teams, uh, through your assignment on Teams. Um, there's an inf information sheet for you to have a look at, and I want you to highlight any information and then answer the questions below. Okay, so I'll just put questions up on here now. So I want you to answer, what is a black body? What happens to the intensity of radiation emitted as a black body as the temperature changes? Uh, can you explain why we see an iron rod glowing red as it is heated? And explain what we see as the rod continues to be heated and why? Okay, so if you pause the video now, this is the main uh, bit of work you need to do. Read the information, highlight anything you're not sure, um, highlight anything you think is important, and then answer these questions in your books, please. Right, and when we're ready, we'll uh, discuss this and go through the answers for you. So, what is a black body? So, as we mentioned already, um, when we talked about this, a black body is something which absorbs all of the radiation which it is, uh, which hits it, basically, and none is reflected. Now, realistically, we can't really have a black body because it, everything will reflect at least some of the radiation. But the closest thing we've got in the universe would actually be a star. So in this picture, strangely, I know it sounds it's a bit odd to think about, the black box is not the black body, the sun is the black body. Because if it's a perfect emitter, because the sun emits all radiation of all different wavelengths, okay, then it's going to be also a perfect absorber. Because absorbers and emitters are basically the same thing. Um, anything that's a good absorber, sorry, is a good emitter as well. It's not the same thing. Um, so, if it's a good emitter, it's also going to be a good absorber. So, a star is a perfect black body, pretty much, or as close as we know, we know of. Um, so, second question: the intensity as the temperature changes. So, we'll have a look at this for this. So, look at these pictures, and we can see that if we have something hotter, okay, the intensity is increasing so the hotter something gets the higher the intensity of the radiation compared to something cooler and what we also see is that the wavelength decreases and this kind of makes sense because if you think about we've talked about wavelength and frequency and energy before as something's wavelength decreases its energy will increase so as something is hotter it emits more radiation overall in more intensity and generally, if you have a look at where this has gone, so it's obviously gone up, okay, but it's also gone across this way towards a shorter wavelength, okay? So if something gets hotter, its intensity increases, but also we find that its wavelength decreases, and that's because it's giving out more energy with that shorter wavelength. Uh, back to the questions again. So these last two, I'll explain from these pictures on here. So we see the iron um, glowing red hot because that is the wavelength of um, the light that it is emitting. Okay, so it is red hot, so that shows us that it's gone from just emitting infrared radiation to as it gets hotter. So if it was just warm, so as you start heating it, it would get warm, and then you would start start to feel the heat coming off it as infrared radiation. And as it gets hotter and hotter, it would start to glow red hot because that, as we said before, with this, the wavelength would go from the um, invisible infrared range into the visible red part of the spectrum. And as it moves into the red part of the spectrum, you'd start to be able to see it glowing red hot. And if you keep heating it, it would eventually turn like this one at the bottom, it would turn white. So it would turn like this one here, and it would glow white hot. And that's because, again, the, infrared, the uh, wavelength has shifted towards the middle of the visible light spectrum and it is now giving out all the visible light which makes it glow white hot. Um, this also kind of explains another part of this picture. If I look at this one again, the blue flame from the Bunsen burner or whatever that heating thing is there, if you think about a Bunsen burner, when it's um, when you've got the flame open, you've got the cool, the safety flame, that is like an orange or red flame because it's not that hot. As you move that towards, as you open the flame, it goes blue. And that's because it's much hotter, and therefore the intensity is higher, and the wavelength is lower. Okay, it's shorter. So the wavelength gets shorter towards the blue end of the spectrum. 
Um, so that's a very, very, very quick lesson uh, there for this. So if you make sure you've answered all of those questions and you've sent them through to me, um, any questions, please ask. I know this is a little bit complicated. It's not ideal that we're doing this um, as a recorded lesson, but any questions, please ask me and I will try my best to help you with those. And we'll cover this again, hopefully, when you get back. Um, so yeah, just send me any work you've done as soon as you've finished it. Thank you.